Yeah, well, today's going to be one of those long days, or very, very long days. Um, we've been up at about 5 o'clock this morning already. Um, then about a 200 kilometer drive. So I'm on my way back home now. Um, then we're going to start working. I'll be probably late for the shop, but um, it is what it is. So then we'll start working. I'm going to do that bike I spoke to you guys about on yesterday's video. I think it's going to be quite a cool um, bike and all the things on it's quite nice. And um, I'm going to show you guys how to remove and work on a few things on this bike. It's actually a few things that I've been asked for um, previous, previously. And uh, yeah, so today we're going to do Vlogmas episode number 16. I'm just glad we're halfway, more than halfway there because this is grueling. Yes guys, this is really... <laughs> It's hard doing a video every single day and finding the motivation to to just put it up there and put out great content and just make it enjoyable. But I do want to thank you guys for all the support and all the encouragement and um, yeah, the channel's been going great. Uh, we don't have a massive view count like other channels, but for a small channel, it's been doing great. So I'm gonna take on this last bit of road, and as soon as I'm home, um, I'll update you guys, and then we'll start working on that bike. And uh, yeah, let's do Vlogmas Day. 16. Close to home, but these days I only feel like I'm getting close to home when I see it starts raining. Oh, the farmers need the rain so I can't complain, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not always the best thing for us hiking store, all the rain. Um, but yeah, at least the guys will be riding in the mud thing and so on, but yeah. So close to home and then I'll see you guys at the shop. I definitely need some coffee as, as, as soon as possible. So uh, yeah, as soon as we have the shop, I'll show you guys the bike we're gonna work on and then uh, we'll get the show on the road. All right, all the fun games behind us. Let's start with this bike real quick. There's a lot of funny shapes on this bike. And in some of the points, it reminds me of a, of a look and then maybe of a giant. And there's just so many different things on this bike. I'm gonna share it with you guys just now. There's a few things that's broken on the bike. I can show you this real quick. I won't say it's broken, but um, that little screw there is missing. So I'm gonna see if I can get the screw for the red roller hanger and that should screw on to there and then uh, I'm already one step closer to finishing this bike so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just make a quick a little um, and here what let me show you how to remove let me show you how to remove the E13 cassette first let's do a bit of talking with me show you how to remove the E13 cassette and um, then I'll make a bit of a b-roll on this bike and I'll show you guys what I'm going to do and uh, we'll take it from there all right, so what I've done is I've actually switched on the lights because it's a rainy day and it's actually quite dark inside the store. So the only problem I usually have with when I put on these lights is that it, it's like a flickering effect on the video. So I hope it's not too bad on the video. I only see it when I edit it. Um, I don't have some of the base camera equipment, but I, I use what I have. All right. Now this is an E13 um, component Charles speed cassette. Now in the past, you need a two chain um, tools, the, the little tool with the chain on it and to remove these I see it's changed a bit and um, which is actually quite nice now when you look at this thing and I'm going to try to show it as close as possible to the camera for you guys there's a little lock and unlock image there and just below the one off uh, the lock one there's a small little allen key bolt that says 10 newton meters oh, 1 newton sorry <laughs> reading it from the side one newton meter that it should be tightened just to keep those two things in place so what we're going to do is we're going to take our chain tool put it onto the gear at the top put our normal cassette span and put it into the cassette or cluster and then loosen it like usual but it's just going to be a small little click and it'll be um you'll, you'll actually loosen it from the up 
I'll try to speak English today there. Anyway, so put the chain tool there, put the cassette tool there, I'm gonna give it a small push, it will move maybe like one centimeter, and then that thing will pop right off and we can clean all the things. I'm gonna show you guys where it creaks a lot inside of these things, because this is a whole machined piece of metal, and um, it, it makes a super bad creaking noise inside of uh, these clusters usually. So let me take that off, I'm gonna show you guys, and then I'll show you where it creaks as well. All right, so you'll need your number three Allen key. Let's make sure about that. Your number number three millimeter allen key we're going to use the normal cassette tool like i said just now and then the chain tool i call it the chain tool it's a chain whip or sr1 whatever you want to call it that's going to be it so we are actually just gonna i've actually cleaned this inside already but i'm just going to show you guys we're just going to remove that remember one newtons is very very little um tension on a bolt so we loosen that there, pops right out, make sure you don't throw that away. Then we're gonna put our chain tool on here, and if you've got someone to help you, it'll be easier. But you can do it by yourself. Put it on there, turn slowly on this one, and it'll pop right off. And then that whole piece of um, gears or cluster, what you wanna call it, will pop right off. So now I'm going to show you guys where it creaks a lot inside of these things and it's something you should really give attention to when cleaning. So let's do that thing. Alright guys, sorry I thought it was recording and it wasn't. Anyway, there's a bolt inside here. It's talked to 3 newton meters, which is also very very little newtons that you talk a bolt. I usually remove these things so I clean it and then I put some Loctite on there. As you can see, there's a bit of Loctite on that. And then now here's the funny thing. And this is the part that rattles and well not rattles it makes a creaking sound like a dry creaking sound you guys all know what it is when you've had this problem and you've done everything else on your bike now this thing will basically just push off you get don't put it too hard but you can get to a point where that one comes off you can take that off with just a piece of plastic a little cover that goes on there and then you can just continue wiggling this one off and then there, you've removed your E13 cassette or cluster from your XD drive free your body. Now the problem is with this is <clears throat> they do sit quite a bit and all those little grooves inside there on this thing and on the free our body, that's what's making that creaking sound. You get a lot of grime and muck in there and dirt and if you don't clean that out then you'll have all these creaking sounds. And like I've told you guys many many times when servicing your bike, when you clean things like this, Clean it properly. You don't want to do the whole service and at the end you get on your bike and it's still making that awful creaking sound. I'm actually I'm actually going um, to Clarksdorp for like two or three days this year. We uh, we didn't think we'll be able to go, but anyway, um, I'm going to work there on a Bianchi. Very, very nice bike, but it's also got a creaking sound and everything else has been done except the BB cups. We haven't pushed out the BB cups on that thing yet. So I'm going to go there, we're going to push out the BB cups and we're going to make sure that that bike doesn't make any creaking sounds. So yeah, let me clean this. Um, if you're busy with this video, pause, maybe clean yours and then um, we'll get to putting it back and how I put it back and with what I put it back because that's also very important. So let's clean this in real quick. Alright, so the angle might be a little bit skewed but it's fine. Um, it's the only way I can show you guys this right now. Maybe it shouldn't have to be. <laughs> that's better. Just to judge you guys like that. Alright. So now I've cleaned the part of the cassette, I've actually cleaned it up very well, we've done the bearings and etc. Now we're going to move on to our grease and you guys now I'm going to use the red rubber grease from Spaniard. This is a very good product. So you're going to grease all the little grooves inside this thing. You're going to grease it right there and then just remember before putting back your little screw there that you put some Loctite on it and then we're going to talk that about 3 newtons which is not a lot. And then we, before we put this back on this plastic spacer, um, obviously we're going to grease inside there as well on all the little threads there, all the little grooves. We're going to push this one back with some grease underneath as well so you know that won't corrode and sit on there after a while. Um, and then you should eliminate that creaking sound that you've got. So I'm going to grease this real quick. We're going to push that on there, grease this one, push it back in, put some Loctite onto that. And then I'm going to show you guys on the other part of the cluster as well. And then I'll show you just how to lock it again and then basically secure the whole cassettes and cluster. And then that's the easy way that you can remove the E13 12-speed cassette. 
I'm going to move on to the bike real quick. There's a few things I want to show you guys on that as well. Parts of the frame. Uh, I haven't even showed you guys the frame. I'm going to show you part of the frame. That's very nice. And then as soon as I'm done with the bike, I'm going to do a nice B-roll on the whole bike and just give you a few likes and dislikes on the bike as well. And uh, I think you guys will enjoy this bike um, because I'm really enjoying it and working on it. It's something new. It's, it's a challenge because there's no manual on working a, on a bike like this. There's no definite torque settings and so on. So it's, it's nice to see um, to what limit you can push yourself. Um, on something new like this. So let me continue with this quickly and then I'll show you guys the bike then. This, I'm actually going to show you guys this. Remember, as your normal cassette, there's a certain um, pattern that you need to put it into. Um, so make sure that you do that accordingly. Um, but what I want to do is I want to show you guys how easy this now will slide in with the grease and the fact that it's clean. Um, you guys saw how difficult it came off and when we try to remove it, and now it's going to be a breeze putting this back on there. Let's just get the right one real quick. On that one there. And uh, it'll slide on a lot easier now that we've cleaned it and re-greased it. And that's basically how you do it. Super easy. I'm um, super convenient, it's nice, it's clean, and it just slid on there real easy. Um, just make sure that you get the right pattern and just slide over that and it will be sorted. Alright, so that's the easy part. Um, just make sure when you put this oak back that you put a little hole there where your screw must come in, your little lock screw, that it's under the open or unlocked little picture there. You're going to put in your normal cassette spanner. Just lock it, just like that. A little bit of Loctite on that screw, put it in there, and one Newton, guys, one Newton is literally nothing. Just tighten it slowly, softly, make sure you don't strip that, and then you've removed, serviced, and installed your E13 uh, 12-speed cassette. Let's move on to that bike then. I know I've been giving you guys a few sneak peeks here and there of this bike, but there's just one more thing I want to show you guys before I continue with the bike and then do the whole, uh, kind of, let's say, review on this bike. I just want to show you guys something small that's quite nice but it also makes the bike quite heavy and like I said this is a Chinese frame um, maybe it makes it more durable I don't know but um, what they've done is and I'm gonna do this real quick <laughs> it's got uh, aluminium inserts on the frame where all the bushings run and down there is a big one there's a big one and then obviously this whole little link on there is um, car and so it runs on the um, aluminium inserts or metal inserts which is quite nice but it makes a creaking sound very very easy so when you guys clean your bike make sure that you clean all these things very very good so <laughs> let me stop whining about this bike and finish it and then we'll do a quick review on this oak all right i actually said that i will make a video on how to remove the um e13 xc crank as well it's a carbon crank but it's quite light i must say it's very very light now I've removed it and I'll put this clip at the end of this whole thing so you guys will see it obviously but it removes like a normal SRAM crank like that thing there it's got its own puller so you basically loosen that and it will come off um, and then when you put it back in you just tighten it again to the uh, specific torque setting just remember one thing on this crank specifically what I'm seeing here is as you guys can see I don't know if this focuses quite enough on that but right there it says pedal and uh, I mean obviously there's no pedal there just remember when you take off your blade or your chain ring or whatever word you want to use for it but when you put your chain ring back that uh, you put it back the way it should be so that's basically where it shoots so I'm going to clean this all real quickly I'm going to put it back onto the bike like I said normal right to tight select till you see removes like a normal crank a normal crank with its own puller the sham crank for example has got an own puller i was baffled a bit by it for uh, for, uh, for a while you can see yeah uh, it's got a square looking um axle on it which is very nice but anyway i'm going to clean that real quick and then we'll do the review on the frame <laughs>
All right, so you guys have seen the bike. Like I said, it's a Chinese frame, but it looks kind of cool, kind of awkward. But the components on this bike really pops and it flows well with everything on the bike. From the Formula um, Cura brakes with a gold color, with the SRAM XX1 gold group set, everything just really works well together. Now, let me show you what everything is Chinese on this bike, or Chinese carbon. I know they make a lot of things <laughs> for the industry, but I mean, this is one of those cheap unbranded frames that's been branded Tornado. But things like this, the Cura brakes are very nice. The XX1 group sets so very nice. This E13 crank, I've been working with on this for a little bit now on the E13 cassette. These things are crazy light. So if you really want to build a bike that's super light and you don't worry about spending too much money, then uh, I must say that's something to look at. Now the carbon on this bike, the frame, like I said, it's got something sort of a, uh, it pulls a bit to the more liking of the look frame. I know the mountain bike frame has got a straight part there. And then, like I said, the rear almost looks like a, maybe a giant or the old silver backs or something like that. But the whole frame on this bike is Chinese carbon. What's nice is, I thought this was aluminium, but it's not. It's also carbon, which is very nice. It's got a set of carbon, um, off the market or Chinese or whatever wheels on it that's been branded Bontrager. It's not um, Bontrager or Bontrager, what do you want to call them? Um, so that's a bad thing. Now I know the bike that this guy had before this one it was a giant, very nice bike. I actually made a video on that as well and it had these wheels on there. Now the few things on this bike, like the suspension on it is super entry level. Um, that's, that's something I would have maybe changed, especially for the price that's been paid for this bike. The one thing that's super cool, he also put on a zero degree offset seat post, looks very nice. The pro stealth seat looks very nice, flows very well with the bike. Like I said, all the gold components looks very, very nice. It's got a carbon handlebar and a token bar stem on here. All of the things that flow is very nice. It's got a gold chain that I still need to put on. And um, yeah, there's, there's nothing that I can really say I don't like on this bike. There's a few things that I like, but that's all the original parts. I mean, from the brakes to the group seats, very nice. Now, in my book, this bike maybe gets an 8 out of 10 on looks and yeah, it's well put together. The other thing is, and the sad thing is, for the money that he spent on this, you could have bought my bike with aluminium wheels that weighs lighter than this one. Now, I don't know with all the upgrades he's done, uh, the carbon crank and a few of the other things, if he's maybe matched my bike's weight um, already. But I remember when we weighed this bike, it was quite heavy. Further, the bearings on this bike, everything is super smooth. Like I said, a well put together bike. It's called KCNC um, stem caps. It's got KCNC pedals, which are very nice. I don't know if you guys know these pedals. They are very nice, small, very light, turns very well. Um, maybe something that I'd consider in the future to put on to my bike. But yeah, this is just the bike I thought I'm going to share with you guys. Uh, it's a Chinese bike, but it's put um, together quite well. And I've got the pleasure of servicing it and working on it and just learning my capabilities and where I can push myself to. Um, like I said, guys, there's no real talk settings on this. So, yeah, it's nice to work on things and, and just test yourself a bit. And that's what I want to do, the motivation as well. I'll do the motivation just now. I just want to finish up this bike and then I'll go sit down and I'll talk to you guys a bit, just real quick. Um, and then uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow for episode number 17. Thanks again for all the support and I'll do the motivation just now. I'm actually sitting here at the shop and it's a rainy day outside and it's not the best of weather. But I've enjoyed being at the shop today. Um, I know it's a public holiday in South Africa, I'm not sure if it's everywhere. Um, but I enjoyed the day at the shop. I was all alone here. I had a friend come visit me this morning real quick and I worked on the bike while we were chatting. And I must say today I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good and, uh, and, and I want to sort of give myself a pat on the back. There was a bike I could have finished today and the client said, I'll oh, come get it tomorrow. And I thought, I'm still going to finish it. Sometimes in life, when we get an extension or, or we get someone that extends the time for something to be done or delivered or whatever, then we usually give up and uh, we go home. And I feel kind of good that today I decided, now I'm going to finish this. 
Although it's not due for today, I'm going to finish it. And that's why I want to get to the motivation with you guys. Rather finish something today than leaving it for tomorrow. Even if it's not super important, try to finish it today because you never know what happens tomorrow. And uh, usually things like that come to bite you in the bum. You know what I mean with finish it today even if it's not important? If we finish the things that we can today, then we open up a gap tomorrow for new opportunity, for new steps in our lives um, to be taken. Uh, usually what I did in the past, and luckily I've changed a bit, <laughs> I would have left things to almost the, almost the end, and then I would do them because I feel that I work better under pressure. And this whole year, because I didn't have a lot of work to do during the year, and there were so many things that just didn't happen, I would leave two or three bikes till the afternoon, and then I would start doing them. I would start doing them because then I get into this nice rhythm and I work and I feel that I'm doing them. But then when someone comes into the shop to buy something or just to get a bit of advice, then I'm too busy to help them. Rather than starting with the work on as soon as I get them, do it and then be able to service the client as good as possible. So guys, never, never leave things till the end. Uh, when you get a task, do it as good as you can and finish that task and put it aside. So you can get the next thing that comes your way. Um, you can take it with both hands and do it as good as possible and service your client and grab the opportunity, whatever it is, as good as possible. So guys, be strong, stay safe. Thanks for all the support once again. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I think one of my biggest problems is I talk a lot when I make a video because there's so many things I want to share with you guys and I can't always show it on video. It, it, it makes sense when I talk about it more than sometimes needed or necessary. So guys, really thanks for all the support. If there's a video I want to see, um, please link it down below because I'm running out of ideas for this vlogmas. I've got about two or three videos left and then I'm done <laughs> with all the ideas, but um, I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll get new ideas as we go along. Remember to share these videos with your friends. Do like them, do subscribe, and get all your friends and family to subscribe. The channel's been growing amazing. Like I said, if we reach, we've reached the one a milestone to be able to get monetized. We just need to reach the second one. And um, I can only do that with your guys' help. So, till tomorrow then. Cheers.